So if you've ever done anything or heard anything about free motion quilting, one of the things that you're most likely to have heard about is tension. It has a bad reputation, I think, um, and it's easily understood and easily fixed. So why do people get so head up about tension? If you think about normally with your um, domestic machine, it is set at a level, and as long as you're using two pieces of fabric and you're stitching that stitch, everything should be good. So the manufacturers can give you a fairly good um, tension setting that works for most things. Think about free motion quilting though. You have a backing fabric, you have your batting, which can be different fibers, different materials and different thicknesses, and you have the quilt top, which can have multiple seams coming together at any one time. So you have a much thicker um, sandwich of fabrics that you have to work through, and that does play a big uh, role in tension. Another thing, you could be using a different thickness and a different um, fiber for your top thread and your bottom threads. So each of these things has a, a role to play and can affect how your tension looks. And obviously you want to have good tension on your quilt, um, so you need to understand how to set it right at the beginning so that you don't get halfway through your quilt and figure that you've got a problem and you've got to take it out. So for me I think the, the main issue comes from Manufacturers telling you should never change your tension setting. When it comes to free motion quilting, unfortunately, you do have to change it. Um, and we're normally not taught very much about tension. So that's what you need to learn is to understand what exactly is going on and how do I fix things up. Later on, I'll show you some pictures of different problem tension issues, different problems with tension, um, and then explain to you what exactly is going on and how you would fix it. So for me, the biggest thing is to start with a foundation. If you have too many variables, too many things that you can change, then it becomes very confusing. So the best place to start is actually with your bobbin tension. And again, your manufacturer generally tells you don't change your anything with your bobbin case. If you have a domestic machine and you're going to do a lot of free motion quilting, it could well be worth investing in a second bobbin case. So you have one that you keep at the factory standard and you have one that you're prepared to, to change and play with. So for me, I like to put my bobbin case on my hand, hold onto the thread coming from it and I should be able to pick up that bobbin case off of my hand so that it stands up just by pulling the thread. This one is actually a bit loose because can you see I can pull out a whole line of thread but the, th the, the case itself is not lifting off of my hand. So each bobbin case has a screw on it that you can adjust. There is a plate at the front that the thread goes underneath that actually squ squeezes the thread onto the side of the bobbin case. That's what adds the tension. So if I look at the screw that adjusts that and I turn it right for tight, left for loose. So on here you only need to make minor adjustments, so minutes of a clock rather than a quarter turn. I adjust it a little bit, so now it picks up a little bit better, but not enough yet. So I'm going to do a bit more. Ooh. Okay, now it's looking better. So now when I lift up that bobbin case, it comes off of my hand, but it also goes down the thread. It doesn't hang there like a spider on a, a web and not move down. It does generate gradually, not generally, it does gradually move down. That is the kind of tension that I'm looking for. So let's look at that again. I put it, the bobbin case flat on my hand, take the thread, lift it up, and I should just then be able to get that bobbin to go slowly down the thread like that. Once I have that kind of a tension, I know that I'm happy with this. I'm then going to leave this alone. I'm not going to play with this tension anymore. But remember, if you use a much thinner thread, you're going to have to adjust the tension because it's going to have less pressure on it by the tension plate. If you have a thicker thread, it's going to have too much tension on it. You're going to need to release it a little bit. So it's always worth doing this drop test with your bobbin case and your bobbin before you start any major project. 
once you have your bobbin case tension set to a level that you're happy with, you can then carry on and do a test stitching before you do your major project. And I do that generally after every bobbin change as well because you can get minor differences and you don't want to quilt a long way and then have to unpick stuff. So have yourself a little sandwich of um, batting, backing and top fabric, preferably of the same stuff that you're using in your project, and do a little test pattern. Do some backwards and forwards lines, some up and down lines and some circles, and then stop and have a look at both sides of your work. Does the tension look nice on both sides? If it doesn't, then you've got time to adjust it before you stitch on your main project. So how do you know what to adjust? For me, I like to work with stories, so I think always of tug-of-war team. If I've got two teams that are playing tug-of-war, and I have an, a mark or a knot in the middle of the rope between the two teams, if one team is pulling harder, they pull the rope towards themselves. So they pull the other team towards them. If this team is the, the pulling harder, they will pull towards them. So in terms of thread, you just need to think of it vertically. So you have a top team and you have a bobbin team. And that knot between the two threads should meet in the middle or within the layers of your batting. If it is laying on the top of your sandwich or on the bottom of the sandwich, then you don't have correct tension. That's when you're going to see those pokies and eyelashes that you often hear about where you get either the bobbin thread showing on the top or the top thread showing on the bobbin. If you have the bobbin thread showing on the top of your quilt, it means that your top thread, your top team is pulling so hard that they're able to pull that bobbin thread up to the top. In which case, what do you need to do? You've already set the tension of your bobbin, so you're happy with your bobbin tension. So that means then that your top team, your top thread is pulling too hard. So you need to reduce the top tension a little bit so that it allows the bobbin thread to pull back down into the layers of your batting. So if you have a domestic machine and you need to reduce the tension, you're going to go to a smaller number. If you have a machine like our, like the long arms here, they have a more industrial style tension disc here and there's no numbers on it. Some of the machines have a display that give you an indicator with a number, but if you don't have that, if you look directly at the um, tension knob here, right will be tighter, left will be looser. So I need to turn this in that instance to the left and one little click is not going to make any difference. On these kind of dials you need to turn at least a quarter turn before you're going to start to see any kind of difference. You may need to do a half a turn, you may need to do a full turn, but go in quarter turn increments um, and restitch your test. Does it make a difference? No, not yet. Then I'm going to turn it some more. As you get used to things then you will get a feel for how the thread feels coming through the tension discs here, what kind of tension I get on it, and you can adjust a little bit more by feel, but it's always good to just do that test sample as well. So the other example, if I see my top thread pulling down to the back of the quilt, and this is the one that you often miss because you're happy quilting and the top of the quilt looks beautiful. It's only later when you turn it over you see, oh man, but I've got a major problem on the back. So if your top thread is pulling down to the bob bottom, underneath your quilt, remember we've set the bobbin tension, we're happy with that foundation. So that must mean it's pulling down, pulling the top thread down through the layers, which means my top thread isn't trying hard enough, it's not pulling enough. So I need to increase my top tension in order to pull that knot back up into the layers of the batting. So domestic machine, if you need more tension, you're going to go to a higher number. On uh, these kind of machines without the numbers, you're just going to turn right for tighter. So again, at least a quarter inch turn, if not a half inch, and then as you get closer to getting the right kind of tension, you can make smaller increments. On your domestic machine, 
there will be a factory default. So just make a note of that if you don't already know what it is. It's normally around 5, that would be your standard tension. So if you do change it tighter or looser, you can always put it back to its standard setting um, once you're done. And remember as well, if your machine sets its tension automatically, it is doing it as if it is stitching through two layers of fabric. It doesn't know what threads you're using and what kind of batting and how many layers you have. So you may still need to make fine adjustments even if you do have automatic tension.